Okay, so we are now broadcasting and we are recording. Okay. So I want to welcome everybody to this week's Take a Virtual Vacation webinar. Uh, our destination for an early 4th of July is Washington, D.C., where we're going to learn about vacationing in our nation's capital. Uh, if you are not familiar with Take a Virtual Vacation, this is a a partnership of four travel agents and four travel agencies. Uh, it, it's myself. I'm Susan Schaefer. I own Ships and Trips Travel here in Tennessee. Uh, Maria Stephanopoulos. Hello. Is in the Tampa Bay area of Florida. She owns Ingenious Travel. And then we also have Barbara Oliver, who owns All Together Now in California, and Gail Sherman, who owns Wine Lovers Travel also in California. And we partnered together to start this back in April after you know all of the stay at home orders started to be put in place and we knew people wanted to still go on vacation, but they couldn't. So this is a way for us to kind of escape at one hour a week and go to a different destination. And if you want to check out our past recorded sessions, or if you want to check out our future sessions, you can find us on Facebook. We started a group called Take a Virtual Vacation. And then we also have started meetup groups called Eat, Drink, Travel. And we have one in Middle Tennessee, and we have one in the greater Tampa Bay area. And then we've got more that'll be coming to uh, California and some other locations in the US. And it's all gonna be about, of course, promoting food, drink, and travel destinations. So you can look up our previous recorded sessions. This session is being recorded, will be uploaded to our YouTube channel and to the Facebook group. And uh, you can also check and see what we have coming up as far as other destinations we'll be visiting in the coming weeks. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Leticia from Washington, DC, and she is going to take us on vacation. And here we go. Well, good uh, good afternoon or good morning, everybody. Um, and again, I'm Letitia Sirtori. I'm with the Tourism Office for Washington, D.C. And uh, today, I'll hopefully, I'll inspire you. And then you can contact Susan and Maria uh, and uh, if you like to book your vacation to Washington, D.C. So... Let's start with a quick video. Hope everybody can see it. I'm not sure there is no music, but I'll The sense of this video is just to give you uh, an idea of who are the people in DC and our messages that is come and discover the real DC. Um, so how to get here? Uh, obviously um, you can fly in or you can, you can drive from wherever you are. Uh, DC is surrounded by two states, our neighboring state, Virginia and Maryland. So together we form also the capital region. We also have ideas if you wanna extend your stay in our region. Uh, we have this partnership on Capital Region USA, so you can find a lot of fly and drive uh, and or driving uh, through um, the two states and everything from the city is within, uh, you know, a four hour distance. So this to make it like a, a, a bigger, uh, longer uh, stay in our region. And uh, once you get to Washington, D.C., um, it's easy to get around. Uh, here is a map, as you see, it's kind of like we cleaned it up because so it's easier for you. Uh, you might be very familiar or not, but DC 
the, the green land is called the National Mall. Our streets are numbered and lettered. Uh, so you find numbers and letters. And the diagonal streets, uh, the avenues, have uh, the names of the states of the United States. So quite simple. Uh, we have a metro system. Uh, we uh, have uh, currently, you know, uh, six uh, lines. And then we also have a circulator. I'll explain to you a little later what the circulator is, but these are the routes of this bus and one of which goes around the National Mall. And we also have water taxis now. They started uh, about a year ago and they take you up to Georgetown into the wharf. So our metro is wamata.com. You can purchase a smart trip. This is the card and you can preload it and you can register. So if you lose it, you don't lose your money. And uh, we uh, ship maps and visitor guides to all of you. You can go on washington.org and request it, or you can call our 1-800 number and we can send it to your house if you're planning to come to DC. And this is the circulator bus. It's the only public transit option that travels along the National Mall. And again, this is the map. So you see the red uh, route with the little dots. That's the route around the National Mall. And then there are a few that connect Union Station, which is a train station uh, from the east into Georgetown from, from the west um, and then north to the south. And then bikes, if you uh, like to bike around and if you've never been to Washington, D.C. is pretty flat, so you can rent one of these bikes and just stroll around at your own pace uh, around the monuments. We have about 89 miles of bike lanes, uh, so it's pretty uh, uh, safe. Uh, and then the water taxis, as I mentioned, uh, so you can get to uh, Georgetown into the wharf that is a new area on the water and then uh, down to Alexandria, Virginia, and also National Harbor, Maryland. So it's quite nice because you can see DC from a different perspective. And then DC is actually surrounded by two rivers. One is the Potomac and the other one is called Anacostia. Um, but let's get to uh, our America's front yard, the National Mall. So everyone that comes to Washington, D.C. Uh, wants to go to the National Mall first because this is where we have all our monuments, our memorials. This is what you see on television. And um, so this is your, has to be on your must do. Uh, and I actually took this photo from the plane. So if you're flying into Reagan, National Airport, this is one of the views that you can get. Um, so let me take you back to this map and walk you through. So again, the National Mall, as you can see, and the National Mall is anchored on one side by the U.S. Capitol. The U.S. Capitol is open uh, to the public. You can reserve online on visitthecapital.org. You can uh, time and pick your day and uh, the tour is free of charge and it's about an hour. The U.S. Capitol is also linked by an underground tunnel to the Library of Congress. And then on the other side of the National Mall there is the Lincoln Memorial. Again, free and open and all the monuments and the memorial that are on the National Mall are open 24-7, 365 days a year. Then you have the White House. Uh, in order to visit the, inside the White House, you have to go through your Congress representative. And then the Washington Monument, the Washington Monument reopened with a brand new elevator and a new area uh, back in September 2019. And tickets to go up are also a time ticket and they need to be reserved online on nationalparkservice.gov. So, and then you have this area, it's called the Tidal Basin. You see the pink trees are our cherry trees. Uh, I'm gonna talk about our festival a little bit later, uh, but uh, that's where you have the Jefferson and other monuments, which I'm gonna go into that a little bit later. So our monuments and memorials. So what you see, and you can tour this area in many different ways. Um, so let me walk, wear your shoes, very comfortable shoes, let's walk. So we start from the Jefferson, where all the cherry trees are, and then we walk to uh, the Franklin uh, FDR Memorial. This is a pretty tucked away memorial, and a lot of people kind of overlook that. 
uh, if you uh, look for a, a place that is also with some peace and quiet, this is probably the place that you want to kind of take a break and take in the nature and the history. And then you can move along towards the uh, MLK Jr. Memorial, which is, was the latest memorial that was built on the National Mall. Also uh, pretty impressive and very uh, quaint. Um, so continuing our tour, and we're walking, uh, we cross the street, and here we go where the Lincoln Memorial is. Uh, and on each side of the Lincoln Memorial, you have the Korean War Veteran Memorial, and on the other side is the Vietnam War uh, Veterans Memorial. Uh, both quite impressive in, impressive in very different ways. Um, Korean War Veteran Memorials is very, very touching, especially at night because the lights light up all the faces of the soldiers. Um, and um, on the Lincoln, my favorite spot, and this is kind of an insider tip, if you go there during the sunset, go on the back of the Lincoln, you get an amazing sunset. You can oversee Virginia on the other side and uh, Arlington Cemetery, and you just it's just a very uh, special uh, moment. And a lot of people don't go on the back of the, on the memorial. Uh, do that when you come to Washington, D.C. Um, and then moving along on our uh, walking tour uh, for today, um, it's uh, now we uh, walk through the, not through, but nearby the reflecting pool towards the World War II Memorial. And then from there, we can reach the White House and then the Washington Monument. This tour, obviously, you can do, uh, as we're doing it today, walking. However, uh, can also be done by bus, uh, by private transportation, by upon or path and on a bike. Um, so many, many options. And also you can do it in the evening and it's pretty amazing because all the monuments are light up. So it's quite special. Um, so, and then uh, obviously the uh, Capitol building. And then as I already mentioned, it's connected to the Library of Congress. They also offer their uh, free uh, tours every day and then the Supreme Court, and you can also access to the Supreme Court uh, and sit into some of the uh, hearings. And then a um, little bit outside of the map because it's uh, technically located uh, in Virginia is the 9-11 Memorial and the Pentagon. Uh, you can take the Metro uh, to Pentagon and uh, the 9-11 Memorial is right outside, and so you can access freely, uh, again, 24-7. No pictures are allowed, uh, but uh, it's free access. While for the Pentagon, uh, they offer tours for groups, um, and your agents can assist you in making reservation if you have a group and you like to do a tour of the Pentagon. Um, while you are thinking and preparing your trip, you can also visit our website, which is washington.org, and we have 360-degree videos, so you can see all these monuments really well. And now let's talk about Smithsonian. Uh, I, I was just on a call today, and someone asked me, okay, I want to visit the Smithsonian, and then I want to go to the American History Museum. And so I explained to uh, this uh, lady on the phone with me that, uh, the Smithsonian Museum is not just one, but there are many. Nine of them are on the National Mall, one of which is the National Museum of American History. And right now, uh, here from the Washington Monument, where we finished our monuments and memorial tours, we start with the National Museum of African American History, and then the uh, National Museum of American History, and then the Natural History Museum. So all these museums are free of charge. Uh, you do not need to reserve uh, also now, also for African-American history. Um, many times we get asked, how long do you need to allow yourself uh, to really enjoy these museums? Um, it depends. You can do it in a quick 45 minutes. Uh, just getting the highlights, or you can stay in there for the whole day. Uh, my recommendation is uh, if you're not sure um, what you like to visit, 
just going there, take a sneak peek. It's like, you know, staying there for a quick 30 minutes and then you can come back the next day or you, if you're traveling with someone else, you can all divide and conquer because usually people have different interests. Uh, so for instance, I'm, I really like uh, American history. So that's where I would spend my time. Uh, my husband loves air, uh, you know, airplanes and spacecrafts and all of that. So that's where we would divide and conquer. Uh, so here, here it is, the other set of the museums across uh, the street, pretty much across the mall. So you have, starting from the National Museum of the American Indian, and then the National Air and Space Museum, uh, Hirschhorn Art Gallery, this is for uh, modern art. And then you have Freer and Sackler Galleries, which are about Asian art. And then we also have other three museums and galleries that are on or near the National Mall. And um, these are all walking distance. So uh, National Portrait Gallery is still part of the Smithsonian. But then we have Ford's Theater. Ford's Theater also has a museum that you can visit. And also in the evening, uh, this theater is still an active theater. So there are shows that you can book and go and enjoy. And then National Archive, and then the National Gallery of Art. And the National Gallery of Art actually consists in two different buildings connected by an underground tunnel. So this goes from, um, there is the only Leonardo da Vinci uh, outside in the United States is in this, uh, in the National Gallery of Art. All these museums also offer free walking tours uh, for that last you know, about 45 minutes if you're, if you're interested in taking a, a guided tour or you don't have your uh, own guide. And then moving along uh, near the Washington Monument uh, on the south side, uh, we have the Holocaust Museum and Memorial. Um, and also this is uh, free of charge, but you need a time ticket to access it. And then the Bureau of Engraving and Printing uh, that's where they print the dollar bills. So again, quite uh, uh, fascinating uh, to see how that's all done. Um, we also have uh, some paid attraction that your agent can assist you in booking as well. Um, and some of them, um, again, everything is very uh, close to the National Mall. So you can fit a lot in, in a day, although I wouldn't recommend because there is so much that you can take in one day. So that's why we usually recommend to stay in DC at least three nights if you can, so that you can really enjoy the city and you can really pace yourself because there is so much culture uh, to take in. So we have uh, International Spy Museum that reopened last year. Um, it's literally behind the uh, Air and Space Museum amazing. Uh, you get an alias when you go in and it's a very interactive experience. Uh, then we have Museum of the Bible um, and uh, Art Tech House. Art Tech House is an interactive uh, art gallery, so they have different permanent and temporary exhibits. Um, so something a little different. It's um, a white canvas and they have a lot of digital uh, art activations. Um, and then continuing our, our tour, um, there are other two museums that are um, closer on the other side, so um, closer to um, National Archives. One is the National Building Museum. Um, and this is a great space also to bring uh, children because they have a lot of interesting uh, exhibits for kids where they can have, be hands-on and learn how to be architects or engineers and then the National Law Enforcement Museum. And then, sorry, it's a little slow here. And then again, finally, uh, three more uh, options for you. Uh, there is Madame Tussauds in Washington, DC, uh, where you can also see all the wax figures of all the American presidents, uh, and then besides celebrities. And then the National Museum of Women in the Arts, so this is dedicated to women. And then one of our newest museum that opened in February is the National Children's Museum. 
and the national, all these museums have uh, paid uh, entrance. And then something that uh, we put together that can be a resource for you while you're planning your trip and what to do in Washington, D.C., if you go on our website on Washington.org, there is also a list of free or almost free, free things that you can do in D.C. Uh, to add on. And uh, we know that everybody likes um, to, you know, use their budget wisely. So you can spend one more day in a hotel or go out and eat in one of our 14 Michelin star restaurants because a lot of our attractions and activities are free of charge. Uh, so we have a lot of restaurants uh, that satisfy any need uh, in terms of budget and culinary taste. And as I said, we are one of the four cities in the United States that have a Michelin star uh, Michelin guide. So if you are a foodie and you're interested in trying one of those, uh, we also have, uh, as I said, 14 Michelin star restaurants in Washington. Um, and then uh, I was talking before about Ford Theater and performances. Our largest uh, per uh, performing arts center is the Kennedy Center for Performing Arts, which is uh, the top picture on, your, uh, on the left side of your screen. Uh, the Kennedy Center is where our opera house is located. Uh, ballet, uh, the uh, National Symphony Orchestra, and they also have on the top uh, a great restaurant and a great overlook on uh, the city and also Virginia, uh, which is, you know, the other side of the river. So this is open uh, for visits and tours as well throughout the day. So you don't necessarily need to have uh, a ticket to go see a show to go there. And another interesting fact is that every day, 365 days a year, uh, they offer uh, free performances uh, every day at 6.30. So if you're in DC, you don't have a ticket, you, don't, uh, you can go and check it out and uh, it's free. And then um, we also uh, have a lot of sports. Uh, so this is just, uh, 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 summary, but um, our uh, the the newest stadium is our Audi Field, which where our uh, soccer team DC United plays. And all of these stadiums are connected via uh, our metro system, so you don't need to drive your car. Uh, and then I was talking at the beginning about one of our major festivals, which is the National Cherry Blossom Festival, that happens every year uh, for three weeks starting in uh, March 20th and uh, running through April. Uh, so this is one of the best times to come visit Washington, D.C. Uh, and see the, the cherry blossoms, like the image in the background of Susan. Uh, and then Passport D.C. is another event that happens every year in May, where we ch celebrate our international community. And it's uh, uh, two weekends uh, in May where the embassies in D.C. that are over 180 open their doors. And so you can do a quick tour around the world staying in D.C. You get a little passport. Um, it's, it's really amazing. And they offer shuttles uh, for people that don't feel like walking that connect you from one embassy to the other. Then our Jazz Fest usually happens in June. Uh, and then we're about to celebrate our 4th of July. Um, there will be fireworks this year as well. And then uh, also during the winter time is really uh, neat uh, with um, all the lights and, uh, you know, the, the trees um, in front of the Capitol. There are a lot of concerts and a lot of activities. And at one of the historic hotels in Washington, D.C., during the month of December, it's the Willard Intercontinental, which is not right next to the, very close to the White House. Uh, they uh, do caroling every night, uh, every day uh, in the month of December. And then um, I want to take you to a couple of the neighborhoods. So Georgetown is one of the most famous ones. Georgetown used to be a small town that then got annexed to the city. And now it's one of the neighborhoods. So you see the map, the green uh, stripe is the National Mall. So you can see where Georgetown is located. There is a harbor, and so a couple of activities that you could do while you're there. Uh, check out the Alston uh, House, which is one of our historic buildings. 
And then there are the, uh, if you watch the movie, The Exorcist, uh, you can go take a picture of the stairs where The Exorcist was shot. And then um, also go check out Dumbarton Oaks Estate and Gardens if you um, love, again, uh, an afternoon in uh, some peace and quiet, uh, enjoying flowers and trees. And then you can also, uh, if you're a sportsy type, you can go kayaking on the Potomac. Uh, and uh, you can also uh, enjoy dinner on our uh, Washington Harbor in, on the waterfront. Um, another neighborhood that is one of the newest neighborhood in DC, it's the Southwest DC uh, Capitol Riverfront where the wharf is located. And again, here uh, around that area is where the Spy Museum and the Museum of the Bible are situated. And then you can also uh, go to uh, the only uh, winery that is in DC. Um, so they uh, produce their own wine there. And so you can have some wine tasting or even beer tasting. And then you can walk down and uh, in the evening either enjoy a baseball match in the summer or a soccer match. Um, Capitol Hill, historical neighborhood. Uh, on the east side of the National Mall. Um, some activities that you can do here, uh, you know, a visit to the Capitol building, which already mentioned, or the Botanical Garden. And then um, on Saturdays and Sundays, you can check out Easter Market, um, which is uh, one of the historic uh, market. Uh, the market in indoor is open every day uh, for pr produce, but on the weekends, you also have uh, an outdoor art and craft market. And on, in the evening, you can dine uh, down Barracks Row. And in the summertime, the US Marine have their concert there. Um, and then 14th Street, a new street corridor. Um, this area is uh, where one of the most historical landmarks of DC is located, which is Ben's Chili Bowl. Ben's Chili Bowl, uh, he's famous for their hot dogs. So um, if um, you want to go there. I think um, I love this story because it's been owned by the same family for over 50 years. The uh, Virginia uh, Lee, which is uh, the wife of Ben, uh, she's still alive and she's there most of the time. So she likes to talk to people and tell the story of DC and how the neighbor has changed. So definitely go there because uh, even their, uh, their, their kids, their children still around the place. Um, and then here is also where Little Ethiopia is. So if you like to try different type of food, DC has the largest Ethiopian community outside of Ethiopia. Definitely something that you want to put on your uh, to, do, uh, to do. And um, Ethiopian food, if you never tried it, is uh, something that you share. Uh, I know we are in a time of social distancing right now, but if you're there with your, uh, you know, significant other or your spouse or your family, it's food that you eat with your hands. Uh, it's definitely an experience, uh, but um, if you like to try something new, uh, this is one of the places that you like definitely to go and one of the best restaurants is called Petete. Um, and then uh, to finalize our trip, um, you have your, um, your agent here that you can ask all the questions. They can help you make the best uh, reservation for your needs. Um, and um, we have a resource on our on our website before you come, uh, if you're coming in the next few months, uh, that is washington.org slash DC together. This is shows what's reopening and what's open in DC. Uh, we are now in phase two. Uh, so most of the restaurants reopen also indoor and museums and art galleries are reopening slowly. So once you book your trip with Maria or Susan, uh, and then you can, uh, you know, check out before you come a couple of days before um, what's reopened. Um, and hopefully soon we can just say everything is back to normal. And so everything reopens. So you don't need to like check out this page anymore, but you can check out the website to know what kind of events are happening. Um, during the time that you're going to be in DC. So thank you for your attention. Uh, and I hope to see you soon. Um, and thank you.
thank you. Thank Leticia. you, Leticia. We appreciate it. You're welcome. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yep. Okay. All right, so now we've got some questions that have come in. I don't know if you have any, Maria, but I, I, I have some questions here. I do have a couple. Um, regarding the National Children's Museum, is there a particular age range that it's geared towards? So uh, they say zero to 12. Um, I went to do, uh, I went to the museum um, and I would say like three to like, from three years old to um, eight, nine, ten, they really can enjoy it. I have a one-year-old. Uh, I didn't get the chance to take him. I will take him, uh, but if you really want to get them to like experience, um, there is an area for the babies or the, top, the under two years old, uh, but I think uh, three, three and up, they will enjoy it the best. Okay. Um, we had a question come in about the uh, museum. Is that yeah. closed or is that open? Yeah. Unfortunately, the museum closed at the end of last year. Um, the building was bought by John Hopkins um, University. Uh, so the museum is unfortunately no longer, no longer there. And yeah, it was one of our favorite, I know. <laughs> We were very sad, <laughs> but they are planning to reopen. Uh, I don't know when uh, in a new location. So hopefully, uh, all those, all everything that was in there, that can be moved into like another location in the future. Wonderful. So that was going to be my next question. If there was plans <laughs> to reopen. Um, also, now for the museums that are free and currently open. Um, is it something something that somebody can walk up or do they have to reserve times given what's going on? So none of the museums that are free are now currently open. Okay. Um, Smithsonian uh, will make an announcement really soon. Uh, we talked with the uh, American History Museum and the Air and Space and um, the zoo um, and they all said that uh, communication from the Smithsonian will come out informing how they are going to go with uh, all of this. So we, we don't have any detail as of now, but I, I'm confident that in the next couple of weeks we'll have more. I, they're just trying to, I think, look uh, what's the best uh, to protect both the visitors and the employees and the staff that is there. And then, um, um we have a question that came in asking about virtual tours of the museums. Are the various museums there doing these? Yeah. So I can share, um, let me share a link that you can go and check every museum in DC that is offering virtual uh, tours. So you can, you can check them out there on our, on our page. So uh, let me, um, I let think me, we have uh, that already link. linked. Okay. Yeah, I think we may already have that linked on, um, I'm, I'm looking right now in, oh, no, we don't. Oh, in the Facebook group? Oh, yeah. Give yeah, we don't. Second. I thought we did. So, yeah, if you could provide that, well, we'll share that in the Facebook group. Yeah, give me one second. And, um, and then, yeah. Joyce, could you, you're asking about what things you found in D.C. during COVID. Could you elaborate on that a little bit, please? I'm not sure um, what in particular you're looking for with that. Uh, let's see. Well, Susan, while well, we're giving, oh, wait. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, she wanted to see if thinking like festivals, music, library, things special to DC. No, um, as of right now, all festivals have been canceled in DC, correct? That's correct. And then is it, do you know what phase that they might be planning to open those in? Um, that's, so the music festival, that's, 
that would be the last. So we're in phase two right now. So that won't happen until um, phase uh, four. So that's the last. That's the last thing that they will. Um, yeah. So um, for instance, uh, for this upcoming Fourth of July, the parade has been canceled. However, the fireworks will still happen. So the link that I shared is everything that's what's what reopened, what's open, what's reopening, what's closed, what's canceled. Uh, this is being updated every day, multiple times a day. We are literally calling all our members attraction towards everybody um, multiple times a day. So, um, yeah. Okay, so the link and that then, you just... Oh, so please. the link that I just sent uh, is uh, for information of what's open, reopen, and now I'm trying to... Sorry, I, I was looking for the virtual... One second. And that virtual link will then um, let us know as well if anybody's performing or doing anything like that virtually? Yes. Coming live? Okay, perfect. So also, I think I'll have to look for it. Um, Great Courses has a series of videos, and I'll find that link, and I'll put that in the Facebook group as well. Um, but they've done a series of courses about Washington, D.C., and you know, different aspects. Because back on Memorial Day, we highlighted their course about uh, Arlington Cemetery. Um, so I'll find that link and I'll put that in the Facebook group as well, because I think that would be some good, you know, like virtual things that people can, you know, do for DC until they can actually get there in person. Okay, let's see. Now you had mentioned the Taste of DC Festival, but you didn't say when that normally is. I know right now yeah, festivals October. are canceled. Is that normally in October? Yes. Sorry about that. Yeah. How long does that one usually last? Uh, it's, like uh, it's over. It's a weekend, yes. Okay. Okay. And then how, um, somebody wanted to know how long should they plan on spending when they go to the National Zoo? Do you have children? Uh, so... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> if you have children, you can you can stay for five hours. Um, um, if you have children that really like animals, then um, no. But uh, average, I would I would say probably uh, between uh, one and two hours. It's inside Rock Creek Park, so you get a beautiful park uh, on top of just being the zoo. Uh, so you can also you know. Um, just relax um, because it's in, it's very green. Uh, but yeah, I would, I would say at least an hour. And I speak from experience, you can spend a lot of time just staring at the panda bears. Yes. Um, also, you mentioned the Air and Space Museum, which is on the National Mall. Um, does the annex for Air and Space that's out at Dulles Airport, is that also free of charge or do they charge admission out yeah. there? No, that that's free, free of charge. Okay. And um, that's, uh, if you haven't had the chance to uh, visit that, that's pretty unbelievable because it's where you have the actual Concorde, the first Concorde aircraft in there. You have the space shuttle in there. Uh, it's, it's so big there. You can spend the whole day. So usually if you're out there, you can go. There are like some outlets so you can go shopping and then you can also go visit the museum and then come back into the city. Okay. Now, do the Bureau in, Engraving, does that, do they still offer uh, tours there? Yes, they do. Is that still through the they do offer, offices? So, um, no, they, you go directly uh, okay. with them, yeah. And then do they still offer tours of behind the scenes at the National Archives? Uh, I need to check on that. Okay. They used to. Because we, yeah. Well, because we have some some very, 
let's say, interested genealogy researchers <laughs> who, uh, you know, their, their interest in the National Archives is not the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. It's more of the behind the scenes, uh, the research rooms, the stacks, and, you know, all of that. And, and I didn't know if they still offered those tours or not. And so they were asking I'll, if that was something I'll that they could still do. I'll check for you and then I'll, I'll send okay. an email. Okay. And then, I mean, I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway for the benefit of our uh, listeners who might also want to know. Uh, somebody is asking um, about how to get to Mount Vernon and how long to plan on spending down there. Okay. So um, to get to Mount Vernon, you unless you are... Um, you're booking a private tour, um, you need to drive uh, because it's past uh, Alexandria. So sometimes what I recommend, and what you can do, actually, you can go to Alexandria, Virginia, and you can take a ferry that connects you from there to uh, Mount Vernon. So you can reach it by water, uh, but then you still need, you need a car um, unless you want to do it both way with the water. Um, how much time you need to spend there. Again, I would give myself like half day, so like three to four hours, um, because it's not just you have the estate, uh, the museum, and then you have the gardens. So you can, you know, I would definitely give myself half a day. Uh, they also have a whiskey. They, um, they do um, some uh, whiskey uh, tours as well there. So um, if you're interested in that, you can also add that up. So um, definitely take your time because, and you know, it's a good, it's a good half an hour to get there from downtown DC, considering traffic and everything. Okay, Maria, did you have any other questions? I do. Okay. Would you say that there is a better time to visit, like one particular time of year over another? Cherry blossoms. Well, I say you can come at any time of the year. And one of the reasons is um, because we have so much things that you can do outdoor and indoor. Uh, so even in the winter time, uh, you know, there is plenty of things to do. Um, if you feel, even if you feel like cold, uh, I would say um, spring and fall um, are two of like the busy uh, time. Uh, so if you're looking for, if budget is not an issue, um, if you're looking for a more, more budget friendly uh, time of the year, um, maybe, you know, don't come in the peak of the cherry blossom. Uh, because that's when uh, that's our peak. That's that's peak uh, season. Um, so April, May, uh, May being a lot of conventions and graduations as well. So uh, the city is quite um, easy. But I'd say June now. If you like the heat, I'm over in August. Mm -hmm. uh, we're here again. Uh, we have plenty of indoor uh, opportunities. I might not recommend to take a walking tour like we did today. Uh, I would, I would, opt, but um, um, if I had to choose for myself and my family, I would come in September. I think that's the best month. But um, but definitely uh, all year all year round. I mean, January can be a little cold, um, but um, Otherwise, uh, there is plenty to do for every season. Wonderful. And, and weekends, yeah. And oh. weekends might be, uh, weekends are usually uh, a best uh, bet in terms of like also rates and availability uh, versus weekdays um, because of Congress and how Congress works and, and conventions. But um, so that's another tip. So. Yeah, because actually I was just going to ask if you'd recommend a long weekend over coming for a week to Yeah, I, I would definitely, I would recommend a long weekend. I think that's where 
a really good destination. And then if you want to extend and stay for a week, then you can extend out. And, you know, I would go to Loudoun, like DC Wine, Wine County, Loudoun County in Virginia, you know, and enjoy some wine or some beer or some gin. If you don't drink, they have, you can uh, still like enjoy the nature, go to the Shenandoah uh, Valley, um, go to the Chesapeake Bay, go to Annapolis. To Annapolis from downtown DC is 45 minutes. You can visit the Naval Academy. is the only academy you can visit indoor. They, can, they offer tours. Uh, it's a really quaint town. Um, and then in the summer, you can take a sailboat uh, so you can do a day trip there. Uh, it's really neat. Um, again, that's uh, so you have options if you want to extend and stay in the region without driving for too long. Um, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. Susan, that's it for my questions. Okay. I don't have any other questions either. So that will be it for today. <clears throat> we will post the recording of this session and take a virtual vacation on Facebook. So if you want to rewatch this, it'll be available there. Um, also, it'll be available, of course, if anybody missed watching this live. And then next week, we're going as far south as south can get us, and we are going to visit Antarctica on take a virtual vacation. Um, and if you have any questions or if you wanna check our schedule to see what's coming up, you can find us again in Meetup as well as on Facebook at um, you know, facebook.com groups, take a virtual vacation. Or if you wanna reach out to any of the four of us, uh, here are our email addresses. You can email us, we'll answer any questions that you have about Washington DC if we didn't answer them in the webinar today. Or of course, if you want to book a trip to DC, we'd be more than happy to help you with that. Uh, if we don't know the answers, if you have a question um, and you know, we don't know the answer, of course, we know how to find those answers for you. So you'll feel free to reach out to any of the four of us and we're more than happy to help you. And then we will see you next week as we go south to Antarctica. Thank you.